while I was playing electric, figure out how to play acoustic. All right, YouTube, what's up, you guys? I got a bit of a story time thing going for you today. I figured I'd hop on here and um, tell you my story. National musician story, how'd I get the gig um, with Lanco? Tell you from when I moved to Nashville up to that. Maybe it'll give someone some insight of just what a trajectory can look like. Everybody's story is going to be wildly different. Um, so all I can do is just tell mine, give you an idea of what it's like to move down here um, and know nobody uh, and try and pay your bills playing guitar, you know, because it's hard. It's really hard, man. And you got to really work at it. Um, but so let's start from the beginning. And the beginning for me will be, uh, I grew up in St. Louis. I went to Mizzou for college. I had always played guitar. I had played in little bands that we just wrote music, did some cover stuff, uh, but never a lot of cover stuff. And after um, college in late 2016, I had made the decision that um, I was gonna move to Nashville. Had never even been to Nashville. And I just said, I'm gonna do it. I, my whole mantra the entire time I've been here is, before I got here especially, is I don't want to get old and say I didn't even try to do it. Um, I loved it too much. It's all I cared about. And that was kind of my, my mindset going into it is I don't want to say that I got old and I didn't even try. So um, I landed in Nashville late 2016. Um, and this will all kind of lead up to how I got the gig with Lanco and what I'm doing now and whatnot. But just a trajectory of what I did. Um, I got here and for the first couple months I had no guitar work um, I was a lot more introverted than I am now uh, going out and meeting people was not the easiest for me um, I was doing a remote software development job um, so I was programming at home and then I would go out some and I slowly kind of started to meet people but really the first big thing is I had randomly one day signed up for this um, uh, music they call it like a boutique music education program, whatever. It's like an eight month intensive. The idea was you're working with um, professional people in the industry in Nashville to learn about it. Um, and I signed up and, you know, it was auditions. I didn't even think I'd get in. I sent in a little tape of me playing something. Who knows? I can't remember. Uh, sent in my whole application and I got a response saying we'd love to have you. Um, so after talking with my parents and whatnot, uh, decided to do that and going into 2017 um, is when I started that little school here. It was eight months, there was 10 people in our class and uh, right off the bat, that grew my network. I started meeting other people, meeting other players. I also started realizing very quickly, there was five guitar players in that class, I think. Very quickly realized I was probably the worst one. Um, I had a lot of practicing to do, a lot, and that will be a through point through this whole story. Um, and I did that, and that school was great. It, it taught me a lot of things, and it didn't just teach me stuff that it advertised to teach me. Uh, it taught me a lot about life, certain types of people in Nashville, good and bad, how to deal with that. Um, how to I, I learned all kinds of basic stuff that's where I learned to read a number chart um, that's where I learned how the recording process kind of works that's where I learned how to work with other musicians and these other musicians it gave me a foundation of like okay now I have a couple guitar player buddies and part of this program also was everybody almost all, all the time I mean multiple times a week was going out to see mentors that were in class teaching us out playing. So then that started getting me out more and I had a group of friends to go out with um, and see people play, see these great musicians play and perform and get to know them and learn from them. And that really started um, just kind of me getting in the scene a little bit. Still didn't have any gigs. Um, and that leads me to a night where uh, the story of getting my very first gig in Nashville was a night that I got invited to go out on like Broadway, something like that. And I really didn't want to go. I remember it being like seven o'clock and people weren't meeting for like a pregame at someone's house until like nine. Uh, it was going to be a late night. I really didn't want to go. Um, I remember sitting at home, not wanting to go. And for whatever reason, I just, I forced myself to go out, got dressed, got showered. I went out, I go to this house, um, I sit down, there's maybe 10 people there. I'm sitting at a round table um, with the one person I had known in Nashville before I moved to Nashville, um, a girl named Kayla Hall. 
and uh, she sit with two other people at the table. I sit down and introduce myself to all these people. Kayla says, oh, this girl's a singer. Um, her name is Jenna Renee. And uh, I just proceeded to, we said hi, said I'm a guitar player or whatnot. And then we went out and we drank and had fun and just went around the town, this or that. Didn't think anything of it. So at this point, I'm still in that Nashville school. And uh, a couple months later, out of the blue, I get a call from that Jenna Renee girl or a text, whatever, um, reaching out saying, hey, Tim, I've got a gig. It's going to be three songs on acoustic at whatever. Um, do you think you could play it? So I said, yes. Um, I remember having to chart those songs because they were all originals, just three. But I had to chart. I'd never charted songs. I hadn't just had to learn a lot of songs by ear. So this started working that skill in me, realizing, oh, I'm not very good at this skill. I mean, I was so nervous for this first gig. Three songs on acoustic. And I'm playing, it's not like hard stuff. I'm playing like... Whatever, you know. Um, but I remember I wrote out charts. I was stressed and sweating over the gig. Um, and I went and did it and survived. I had my charts on the ground. There was a Cajon or Cajun, whatever they're called, player. Um, and it was great. Uh, I got paid a hundred bucks for the three songs, which I thought I'd won the lottery. I thought, I knew it was paid. I thought I was gonna get like 20 bucks. I came from playing all the time with just my little band. So we weren't ever playing for money. Like one time we made 150 bucks, but otherwise I was just in college playing for fun because I loved it. So 100 bucks for three songs, I was blown away. Um, and for the next year or so, that same artist would continue to call me and I'd play on Rider Rounds um, with her, which is just um, you know a really common Nashville thing. She didn't play guitar, so she needed an acoustic guitar player. We also started to write some together. Um, I wrote multiple songs with her, one with a really cool riff that's this. <laughs> At the time, I wasn't really writing lyrics, but she was just lyric machine. So I'd bring in ideas like that, and then she'd just write a whole song in like 10 minutes over it. Um, so that was my first exposure to that, and I did that for a couple years. I finished that school program, um, and that really started to give me the home base in Nashville. Okay, I know some people. I have some friends. I'm starting to gig some. I'd go to these rounds, and... I'd meet some players. Rounds are hard for a player because you're meeting a lot of writers, and most writers can play guitar, so there's most of the time not a person backing them up. So I was meeting writers, but I wasn't meeting tons of players. Um, in the summer after I finished that school program, she called me again and said, hey, I've got a full band show up in New York, or maybe it was two shows up in New York. Do you think you could... Um, come play it and I was it was a full band but I was playing rhythm acoustic in the full band but showed up to that first rehearsal and I met the electric guitar player the keys player the bass player and the drummer who were all guys that are working a bunch of the time in Nashville on Broadway and traveling and doing doing the thing so that gave me an awesome jumping off point to be like okay now I've got friends that are uh working you know, really doing it, and they're players. Um, I did that gig, it went well, and months later, I'm just jamming one day with the drummer. I just met up to jam with the drummer, and I was like, man, I'd really love to get some type of consistent gig. I was at the point where I was like, I think I could do it, it's terrifying, but I wanna do it, I know I've gotta throw myself in the deep end. Um, and we were just kinda of talking about that, and he was like, yeah, man, you know, like, you just keep putting that out there, you'll find it. Well, while I'm jamming with that drummer, um, I get a text from the guitar player that was in that uh, live full band show I did. He says, hey, man, I've got a... This was on Tuesday. He said, hey, man, I've got a show on Friday and Saturday with a group I play with, two nights in Virginia, Nashville, cover set. Um, I can't make this. Do you think you'd want to do it? And uh, I said yes. And uh, I was proceeded to, they proceeded to send me a list of like 50 songs um, that I'd heard before, but, and I've alluded to this in other videos, had never played. I'd never played Friends in Low Places or Folsom Prison or Chattahoochee or any of this. Um, 
and I had like three days to learn it. And I, there's no rehearsal. I was going to meet these guys, which I did. I met these guys in a Walmart parking lot at 8 a.m. on Friday morning to drive to Virginia. That's when I met the whole rest of that band. So, man, I practiced and I hated it. I hated every second of it. I was so anxious. I never hated anything more in my life. It felt like I was so scared. I had notes written out, charts written out all these songs, all this stuff. I'm doing the best I can. I've never done this before. Um, and I hadn't met the guys and I was just, I mean, I was terrified. When I tell you terrified, man, that's nerve wracking. Um, I did get a little bit that helped on Wednesday night. That group, his name's Garrett Spear, who you've seen if you've watched one of my gig vlogs. Um, uh, they were playing in town on Wednesday, on a Wednesday, I think. Um, so all day long I've been practicing. I mean, I woke up like as early as I could wake up and I was just playing and playing and playing and as anxious as I could ever be about this. Um, and they let me come down and sit in. Uh, and I remember I sat in and we played Chattahoochee and Drink in My Hand. I screwed up Chattahoochee right off the bat, but not not train wreck, but I did screw it up. Uh, and then we did Drink in My Hand. And Uh, so that made me feel a little bit better but I met up with those guys went down there played two nights I did the best I could thankfully the lead singer also plays electric guitar and is a pretty good electric guitar player so he could kind of give me a little bit of padding cushion um, for me to not have to carry all of it all on my own so I ripped some solos I did the best I could uh, and it was a ton of fun um, and that gig went good they called me for a few more, and uh, I think at the time I was making 175 per gig, no per diem or nothing else. Um, uh, hotel and everything paid for, I just had to show up. Um, and I played maybe three more gigs with them, and I was playing one downtown, and Garrett said, hey man, um, Corey, who was the guy who had called me, he's like, I don't know if he's going to keep playing with me. I think I need you for, we're about to go to Las Vegas. Uh, we're going to play at the MGM Grand at a bar called Losers inside the MGM Grand. It's a full week long. They're going to fly us out there and we're going to play. I'm only like four gigs in with these guys. I've been in town for about a year and a half at this point, but I haven't like full-time gig. So the thought of getting flown out and I'm getting paid, I think it was $700 for the week, which is not a lot, but, um, and I'm going to Vegas. I remember calling my dad telling him like, I think I'm going to Vegas, this guy's taking me, and we're going out there to play, and I get paid, and I remember my dad being like, no way, um, it was awesome, so, uh, went up, uh, got on the plane, went to Vegas, I'm listening to only the songs I remember, it was one of those where we flew in that morning and played that night, so I had my charts on the plane, and I was listening to songs and, like, going through my notes, I was still so new to the gig that I was trying to learn everything, um, man, got to Vegas, had my own room, uh, got paid for the weekend, had a killer time. I'd also never been to Vegas before. And at this time, I'm maybe, I'm maybe 24 at this time, 23, 24. Uh, we had a ton of fun, a ton of fun. And um, we, from there, I proceeded to play with Garrett for the next three, four years. You know, COVID, obviously, we had to take a break, but I was playing with Garrett up through 2020, um, and then a little into kind of 2021 when stuff had opened back up some, uh, and I learned a ton on that gig, man. I, that's where I learned how to play with a band, how to take requests, how to solo for a long time. A lot of these songs you've got to extend, and how do you, what's the easiest way to extend it? Solo for longer. We've got four hours to play. Keep soloing. Um, so I just got put through the ringer so many times that I started to learn get a little more adapted to that i got used to going to a real sound check how do i set my monitor um that took me a really long time to figure out what kind of tones sound good is my gear working all of those things you know are such important things that if you want to do this you've really got to jump in and then you're going to learn that stuff playing you really can't there's no shortcut for like learning that stuff playing besides playing live you just got to go through it and do it um and i did that for three or four years or so um I'd play other gigs here and there. During that time, I also got another artist gig with this uh, woman named Danielle Johnson. And um, that was rehearsals and more original music, and that got me a little bit more into that scene, and I was making money from that. Um, I was rehearsing. I was making $250 a show with Danielle Johnson, and we played maybe 
maybe 10 shows a year, but we were rehearsing six times a month. So we do it a week on, week off, three in a row during a week, hour and a half rehearsal. Um, I was making 150 per rehearsal. So that was, that combined then with going out on the weekends with Garrett, making 175 per gig, I'm playing two to three shows per weekend. Then every other week I'm rehearsing six times at 150 bucks. You know, when you're 24 and brand new to it, uh, it started to make a little bit of money. Still had the programming job. I could do that remote. I was still able to do that. Um, so slowly my income started growing a little bit. That's still not tons of money, but I could put a little bit, of, a little bit of food on my table, uh, and you know, just barely make rent each month from mostly playing guitar, which was awesome. So fast forward, um, Daniel Johnson, once COVID hit, that kind of ended. Um, and with Garrett, I played with him some more and there I just, after three or four years of playing, um, I started kind of feeling in a rut. Um, I felt like I wasn't progressing as much anymore, and I loved those guys. Still love them. They're some of my best friends if you're watching this, Garrett or Matt. Um, and I made the hard decision to just kind of leave. I said, I'm going to leave, um, and I gave him plenty of notice, but I left with no other gig in hand. I had nothing lined up i didn't know what i was gonna do but i just i just had this feeling that i was like man if i don't leave now i'll wake up five more years from now and be playing the same bars to the same college kids to the same you know and i just i wanted more than that i wanted to make more money i wanted to be on the huge stages i wanted to really dive in and get in um and i in a deeper level than just the cover band so i left that and for three months i had nothing nothing uh then, by chance, uh, a guy I had met once when he was visiting town, moved to town, brand new to town. He's maybe three or four years younger than I am. Uh, and just because I had met him one time and we went out, uh, he just texted me. He was like, hey, man, do you want to jam or something? I'm brand new to town. Uh, and that guy's name was Charles Walker. And uh, I ended up becoming great friends with Charles Walker. I was going over to his house, and we were jamming, making music. He was a producer too and a singer and can play and do all kinds of stuff um and one night we were out at a gig and i was like man i'd love to play more on broadway or something but like i can't sing so i can't just like start a band i didn't think i could um and i had no gig at the time and i remember being depressed about that um because i'd gone from playing so much all the time and getting that shot of adrenaline all the time to not having it at all and not having good consistent income and that really was hurting me mentally. Um, and he was, I remember him sitting there and him being like, well, man, I sing. Maybe we should do that. So we started trying to rehearse a Broadway set. I brought in all the old songs I used to play with Garrett. He added a bunch of country songs that he liked. We had a list of a hundred or so songs. We rehearsed for a month or so. And Charles was a hustler. And Charles um, is doing really great in Nashville now because he wasn't afraid to go out and talk to people. Um, not afraid to just you know put himself out there and that's going to be a reoccurring thing coming up here too is putting yourself out there and i'll talk about that but uh one day i get a call and charles has uh got a gig on broadway uh it was a morning shift from like 10 a.m to 2 p.m at uh honky tonk central on the third floor when there's three bands playing on the very top floor which is where normally where the newer bands are especially in the morning shift um and went down there and played. At that time, I also got a little bit of an artist gig. I did a Christmas tour with an artist named Morgan Miles who would go on the next year to place second in The Voice. And I did, did Mariah Carey's like, Merry Christmas album, top to bottom. That was one of the hardest gigs I've had to play music-wise still today. That was really hard. I was just trying to figure out all those guitar parts and the music was complicated but at the same time that had happened and I got this Broadway thing and the Broadway thing then turned into for the next nine months I'm playing down there five days a week playing all the time um, and about halfway through that journey I was doing some other music on the side small artist thing stuff that's not paid jamming with people anything I could uh, I was just anybody that would call if I could play it I'd pick up the phone I'd try and do it even if it made me nervous or anxious or I was like I couldn't do it I just try to do the best I could I'm sitting in a rehearsal for another little band that I started playing with that I wasn't making any money from just doing it for fun 
and I get a text from a guy named JP Burr, who I had known on Instagram, but never met. Um, and he goes, hey man, I'm looking for a sub that can fill in for me. The an artist named Hayden Kaufman. It's two shows this upcoming weekend or whatever. There'll be one rehearsal. Um, and he was like, I need a guy that can play lead guitar and sing background vocals. Now, I didn't sing like any background vocals. And um, that's a great example of, I could have read that text and been like, yeah, man, I can do it. The thing is, I don't really sing background vocals. So, you know, um, but instead of doing any of that, I just said, yes, I immediately responded. I said, I'm available. I'll do it. Um, I kind of like put the cart before the horse, right? Where I was just like, send it. I'll do it. I'll do the best I can. Um, and I showed up and um, I wasn't really able to sing background vocals, but I was the first one to respond and I was available so I could do it. I practiced that music a ton. I showed up to rehearsal and I had the same thing. So nervous uh, meeting all these guys for the first time. And uh, I remember Hayden being like, man, thank you so much for showing up so prepared. You sounded great. Uh, it was a really good thing. And when I got to that rehearsal, there's two guitar players in that band, and the other one um, was instantly kind of telling me he was on his way out. He was like, this is kind of the last gig I'm doing. He's like, if you want my spot, you can have it. And then the guy I was subbing for, JP, would come back. So I did that gig. It was good. I was making a little bit more money. I was making like 250 a show, 150 rehearsal, uh, $50 a day per diem, which is good on that level in Nashville, especially $50 a day per diem. Uh, I still have never gotten that since. Um, and Hayden runs a really good group and his progress just continues to climb, to climb. Um, so I started playing with Hayden full time. And when I wasn't doing that during the weeks, I was on Broadway and just hustling, you know, just trying to make money. Uh, and it was great. I got to with Hayden start doing a little bit more of the real artist gig thing. We had some good big opening shows. Uh, and this is around the time that I started deciding I want to get on TikTok. Um, I'd always posted videos on Instagram and stuff, but TikTok, I just started posting stuff, um, talking about life in Nashville, and it, it, it's where this channel, this YouTube channel that you're watching right now came from, talking about Nashville, what it's like to be a guitar player, a normal guy down here, or gal, but a normal person down here, just trying to make it, trying to pay rent, trying to do something with music, trying to make myself feel fulfilled, whatever. And that, I posted some videos on TikTok in one night, I posted a video um, that read something like this. It started with, so you wanna be a guitar player in Nashville. And then I just did like a three minute video of like, here's what it's like, here's what you could maybe expect. I woke up the next morning and that video had like 15,000 views. Now my views before that on my TikTok videos were getting like 300, maybe 1,000 if it was a really good one. So this was like a huge, it's the first time I woke up in TikTok, the notification section said 99 plus. You know, it was the first time I'd ever seen that. And I was like, dude, this is crazy. Oh my God, you know, I thought, I was like, okay, people connect with this. So I just started pouring into that TikTok content of saying, okay, how can I take people behind the scenes? How can I show them more? Do people like teaching stuff? Do people like um, behind the scenes stuff? Do people like me talking about Nashville? And all while I'm doing that, I'm playing on Broadway so I can take people onto Broadway and show them that with TikTok. I can take them on the road with Hayden, show them what an artist gig looks like. And I just slowly kept doing that, kept doing that. So then playing with Hayden, been on Broadway for about nine months. Charles decides to end the Broadway band because um, he's making way more money just playing acoustic and the Broadway band's blowing out his voice. And I don't blame him. You know, at the time it sucked because that was a big source of income for me, but um, the right choice at the time. So then I knocked down, I'm just playing with Hayden. So one day I realized that the Lanco band account has followed me on Instagram. Now, when Greatest Love Story came out, I remember finding that before it was even on the radio, just on a Spotify playlist, and I had added it to my songs, and I would listen to that in the car, and I loved it, you know? I was like, man, the churn at the end is so good. This is a killer song, wow. Um, and it's funny, I tell the guys this now, once it started getting played on the radio all the time, uh, at that point, I'd become annoyed with the song because I'd listen to it so much that I'd just turn it off because um, I'd already been listening to it. So that band account on Instagram followed me. And like I said, I thought, man, that's pretty cool. Um, it was the real band account I, with the blue check mark, right? 
So fast forward like two days later, I'm getting out of the shower. I'm getting ready to go to a rehearsal for Jenna Renee, that girl all the way back at the beginning. Um, that uh, she just had a, a one-off gig in town type of thing. I was playing acoustic on it. And I look at my phone. I'm, I just get out, I got out of the shower. I was getting ready to go to uh, the rehearsal. I look at my phone and on Instagram, I've got a DM from the Lanco account. I open it up and it reads something like this. It says, hey man, my name is Brandon Lancaster. I sing in Lanco. Now, I knew nothing about any of the players in Lanco. I just heard the that song in Born to Love You um, and what I see that was on the radio for a little bit. But I knew nothing about the band. I never listened to any more of their music. Um, it goes, I sing in Lanco. We might have an opening for a um, guitar slot. Is that something you'd be interested in pursuing? So a couple things I had done, and I'm leaving tons of stuff out. I've played bunches of gigs. I'd done a bunch of auditions. We'll do a whole nother video about auditions in Nashville. But uh, this is not how you get an audition. It's always the, the music director or um, another player uh, or the manager reaching out to you saying, um, hey, we've got auditions, cattle calls. The singer never messages you on that level asking you to come do it you know it's different if it's a hayden kaufman or uh or even more so below uh hayden kaufman where the singer will message you but here you know uh five to eight times platinum band and the singer's reaching out to me I'm thinking what so i almost didn't know if it was real um i was like okay obviously i replied back to it and i was like uh, i'm absolutely interested and he was like okay let's get on a phone call when are you free so it was like two days before the phone call and i remember just crazy thinking about it um being like wow this is insane my girlfriend janelle uh i had told her about it and she was like this is crazy she's like um you know also she was the first one that put into my mind that it wasn't just a gig because i remember her being like you know lanco's like a band she's like it's not just like an artist like that's a band and that made me start thinking oh it, it is it's a band and thinking about i guess that is different than like an artist like everyone in the band is on the picture you know um i looked up interviews and started listening to their music and everybody in the band is in the interview everybody in the band is on the red carpet you know in the country world or any world um you know it's keith urban being interviewed uh it's keith urban on the red carpet you know the band is just playing the show the band isn't doing all that stuff so that first bit made me think and be like oh this is um maybe this is a unique opportunity so fast forward a couple of days I get on the phone with Brandon I'm so nervous for this phone call end up talking to him on the phone for an hour uh, talking about all kinds of stuff what they're looking for uh, and he's like man we've been following your stuff on TikTok now on TikTok at the time I had like 5,000 followers it's not like I'm some huge name on TikTok and he's like man I think we like your vibe it, you know and he asked me when we got on the phone tell me a little bit about yourself what have you done music wise and I'm telling him all of kind of what I'm telling you now um and we talked and talked and he was like man we've got a show on march 18th this is a, not this past march the last march um and he's like we want to hang out do a bit of like a soft audition whatever and he's like we'll have um you come hang and if it goes well we'll book you for this first show and we'll kind of see what happens from there so Brandon never even gave me any songs to learn. I remember him hanging up the phone and being like, man, we're going into the studio. So if you don't hear from me for the next two weeks, don't think I forgot about you. You'll hear from me. Um, so I'm waiting. I'm waiting anxiously. They also asked me not to make that public or tell people. So I just had a few of my close friends that I had told about it. Um, and I was really anxious, just waiting, waiting to hear. And like on a random Tuesday, I get a call in classic, now I know, Lanco fashion from Brandon saying, hey man, can you uh, meet up like tonight? Um, and I was like, oh my God, I was so nervous. I wasn't prepared. Um, they never even gave me what songs to learn. So I just went on Spotify and I learned the top three, which is Greatest Love Story, Born to Love You, and What I See. Um, 
obviously greatest love story so i was looking up live videos of what the other player had been doing live um and just trying to prepare myself at all for really short notice for an audition now normally in nashville an audition you get called your time slot is 12 30 to 1 p.m there's eight people in line behind you. You come and you play with the band. Uh, if it's a big enough gig, the singer won't even be there. Or the singer will be sitting out on a couch and they'll play his track and uh, just his vocals in the track so they can watch you perform and do your thing. And then they shake your hand. They might ask you a couple questions. They say, okay, well, you'll be hearing from us. Thanks for coming out. And then the next guy comes in. This audition, uh, I pull up and it's at Jared's, our utility player's studio. All the guys are there. I meet everybody. Keep in mind, I have not been around any famous people at the time. Uh, and I had listened to the music and I was like, damn, these these are the guys. Here they are. This is These are all the guys on the picture. They were all super kind to me. As soon as we got in there, the first thing we did was play some music. It's nighttime. Um, played some music. I did the best I could. I played through Greatest Love Story. We played Born to Love You. I did what I see. Um, and then they, uh, just to test me a little bit, we do this troublemaker jam that if any of you guys have watched my videos, you've seen me do, um, where it's a big improvised thing. And Brandon was like, okay. And he was telling the other guys this, let's not tell Tim anything. It's in the key of E. We're going to do this jam and we want you to just play, just play over it, do something, do something cool. So it's that E jam and they just kept going and I just went for it best I could. I don't know. I was just making shit up. Um, and that's where all those years of playing those extra solos, um, playing for long times on Broadway and stuff. Like I still had a lot to learn, but I could go in and send it and try the best I could in a really stressful environment. Now the other guys, this isn't stressful at all, but when you're the guy in the hot seat and this is a gig that at the time you're thinking this might change my life, which it has, it's really nerve wracking. You really want to impress them. Um, and I did the best I could, whatever. And then we sat and hung out. It cracked some beers. I talked to them for hours. Um, they told me what they were kind of looking for. They made it clear that they weren't just looking for a side player. They're looking for a member to be in the band Lanco. They're not just looking for a guy to collect his per show paycheck and show up and do it. They, they want a member, someone that's part of the family. That's how Lanco operates. And I remember leaving that just being ecstatic. I mean, I was so excited. And they said, okay, we'll do March 18th. You're in for March 18th. And the real audition was kind of that. The real audition is, okay, he can play. Can he go hang at the gig a 90 minute set? Can he play well? Does he perform well? Does he travel well? Does he pack okay? Does his gear work? You know, there's all those factors that go into traveling and playing professionally that I had been preparing for not knowing, unknowingly, for years and years and years of learning how to get my gear working good, how to play in a band setting, how to perform well. Um, so I practiced that set over and over and over. I didn't listen to a single song besides anything on that set until we played that set. All my energy was I had a month of doing nothing but thinking about that set, playing it, playing it, playing it, learning it. We did a few rehearsals. Um, and I showed up and I remember going to the airport that morning. I was so scared, man. I did not want to go. I absolutely didn't want to go. I was like, you know what, forget it. I'll just drop all this. Let me quit now. Um, and of course, I've noticed in my career, the times that I feel like that are the biggest leaps forward in my career if I go through and face that feeling every time, hands down. Whether it's that first acoustic gig for three songs that I'm terrified of, if it's the first cover gig where I had to cram 50 songs that I'm terrified of, whether it's going down on Broadway and taking requests that I'm terrified of, showing up for Hayden Kaufman's first rehearsal, terrified of, and now to Lanco, terrified of, every time I had gone through and faced that feeling and put myself in the fire, my career it took a big next step forward every single time. It has never not been the case. And, um, I'll say real quick to any of you that have made it this far and following this story and you're thinking about coming down here and doing this, that's a fear you're going to have to face. You're going to have to. And um, it's survival of the fittest. The people that can't face that fear just don't make it. Um, now, you still might face that fear and never get off Broadway. That's just how it goes. But you're putting yourself closer. Um, and if you don't swing the bat, you won't hit it, right? 
I was terrified for that gig. I went and did it, and I did pretty good. I did pretty good. I was pretty happy with it. Um, now there was a lot to learn still, but I was pretty good. So then the way it evolved is I'm slowly building in with the band. I'm kind of a side player at that point, but I'm faux, uh, band member because I'd get to do the meet and greets and um, I'd travel around with the band. The band travels as a unit. Um, so there was times where they'd go out to dinner with radio people or whatnot in the beginning and I'd be asked to maybe just not come, um, which is totally understandable. And at the time, that's really hard because in a normal environment, um, Hayden Kaufman or any other artist, you're playing with Keith Urban and he's going out to dinner with the label and the radio people. It's just Keith. And then you hang out with the whole band. Whereas here, I was getting asked to stay and the whole band's going. I'm the only one left out, besides our crew. But the, the you know, player-wise, it's uh, that was hard. But I knew, I was like, I'm earning my spot. They've said they want a band member. I'm just putting the time in, trying to grow. I'm trying to do it. Uh, and slowly over time, that stepping stone just kept moving forward. Kept getting a little bit better. Um, now, all the while, I'm still doing TikTok. Then at the start of this year, I said, I'm going to get into YouTube. I've been wanting to do YouTube. I think it's going to be better than TikTok. I want to do YouTube. I started doing YouTube videos. You guys started watching. Um, those YouTube videos fairly quickly started getting me just more eyes on me. I was putting myself out there. I get hit up by Brian Wampler. I start getting hit up by companies that want to send free gear. Even if I don't accept that gear and it's a cheap guitar stand, people are still knowing my name. Uh, fast forward, I get hit up by Premier Guitar. If you guys have watched that interview with me and John Bollinger, I'm, I find myself, you know, a month ago sitting in the room with John Bollinger getting interviewed and hanging with him and all the guys at Premier Guitar on like a real set and shoot. This is just my camera. That's this, That was like the real deal. Um, and, you know, I just kept doing those YouTube videos, which I'm still here doing, which became another part of my business now. And now I'm teaching more lessons because of that. Um, and, and to not stray too far from the Lanco story. So I was kind of a side player with the thought of you're going to be in the band. Uh, I slowly just started getting closer and closer to it. Uh, they were going in, I knew they were going in last November to record music, and I really wanted to go, but I wasn't gonna ask. I wasn't gonna push it. If they asked me, I was gonna be ecstatic. And I knew they were going in. It wasn't till like four days before that Chandler, the bass player, called me. He's like, hey man, are you free? Uh, we want you to come into the studio with us. And I was so excited, now terrified. Also, let me tell you terrified. Also, that first session was with Jay Joyce at his studio, um, which if you know anything about Jay Joyce, you already know. If not, just look him up. Um, but I'm not a session player. <laughs> my first like real, I've done some demos, but my first real session is with a producer who's got more than 70 number ones and is like, he just won that year producer of the year. like, And is known to be a little bit of a hard ass, which he put me through the ringer, but it was really good. Uh, and I liked Jay. I liked Jay a lot. The guys had told me so many horror stories about it, but went in did the best i could came out the other side i'm still alive um and slowly and then i played on a little bit of more music we're playing and right before the band's getting ready to go to the acms last year the acm awards we're playing the after party um and it's uh it's one of those things where i knew i was going because we're playing 
but the whole band is actually going to go to the awards. And I got on the phone with Brandon and I was like, hey man, I just want to know it's totally okay either way, but am I, am I going to the awards? Am I just going to play? And I remember I was on our band's calendar and they had like a fitting for outfits and stuff. I wasn't invited to that. And I'd had a good conversation with Brandon and he was like, man, we want you to be there and be in this. It's just, um, He's like, right now, we're going to bring you along. You can watch. This is the first time the band's going kind of back into the public eye. The band's going to do the red carpet. The band's going to be doing interviews. The band's going to be going to the show. And he's like, we want you there to watch, but we're not going to throw you right into the fire a little bit. Just like sit on the sidelines and learn some. And I was like, okay, I understand that. I really wanted to go and be a part of all that. But, um, you know, I totally understood. And the next day, Brandon hits me up and he's like, hey, man, are you busy? I was like, no, I was free. And he's like, all right, come down. Uh, let's get some lunch. Or not lunch. Let's get some dinner together or something. So we go to Cilantro, Mexican restaurant. Brandon sits across from me. This is the very next day after that phone call conversation. And he's like, man, um, basically he says you're in. You're in if you want to be in. Um, and he explains to me a little bit about what being in means. You know, I can't just call a sub. If you're in the picture, you can't just... You know, it, it's different than just being a side man. Um, and I remember him saying, he's like, man, you look down and that red carpet is under your feet, but there's a price you pay for that. Um, and there is. Uh, but this was like three days before the ACM Awards. So then he tells me, okay, you're in the band now. And that means you're going to the ACM Awards. That means you're going to the red carpet. That also means that tomorrow you need to be available because we have a fitting with the stylist to pick out outfits and then get them tailored for the ACM award, which was so cool. You know, I mean, if you've never done that, right. That's like a, Whoa, I'm, I'm getting clothes. I get clothes, you know, and that was part of it. Okay. You're in the band now. Let's up your look. Let's get you some new clothes. Let's get you stuff. That's cool that you like. Um, so I went and did the fitting thing and the fitting was really cool. There's a bunch of options and I wasn't just told what to wear. I was picking through options and trying stuff on and taking stuff off. Um, and then once we found something that I thought was cool and the guys told me that before we went into the fitting too, they were like, man, if there's anything that you don't like or you're not comfortable with, just don't be afraid to say, this isn't my vibe. You know, no one's going to tell you what you have to wear. This is you getting to pick stuff to wear. And I picked out a cool outfit. I got the pants all tailored to me. I got a set of boots, um, which are clothes that I keep, I have. Uh, I wear those boots all the time right now. In fact, you can see the black Tacovas up there. Uh, so I went to the ACM Awards. I walked on the red carpet. I did the interviews on the red carpet with the band. I went to the ACM Awards. Now, going to the ACM Awards as a normal person, you'd be like, okay, I'm going in. I remember we walked in and we're already on the floor level. And we were walking to our seats and we just kept walking and kept walking and kept walking. I look up there and we're at like seventh row from the stage. I was like, oh, in fact, it, you wouldn't be able to find it, but uh, on live shots of it. And we're back. Nothing like your phone dying in the middle of your video. This is Tim Avon production quality, you guys. I was saying there's shots of it. It's going over the crowd. You can see me. Um, the ACM Awards was really cool. That was my first time of getting to be in the same room as all these stars, um, which was awesome. The red carpet was special. And um, then the cocktail, the, after the red carpet, if you walk the red carpet, you go into a cocktail hour. That's about, an, uh, we were in there for an hour and a half, maybe before the show starts. Um, and in that cocktail hour, it was just like, I was seeing all kinds of people that, um, I didn't talk to lots of them and plenty of people I don't know, but just everybody was someone it felt like. I was around like everybody. Ernest walks by me. I'm like, there he is. I know that guy, right? Thomas Rhett is over there. I was in line to get a drink at the open bar thing and the person directly in front of me in line is Scotty McCreary, right? I saw Chase Matthews there, which I, I know Chase from previous gigs we had played open enough for him with Hayden Kaufman and he's always been really nice to me so I talked to him for a little while but that was a, an awesome experience and then it just kept growing now you're in the band now I'm in the pictures I've played on all the new music and what does that look like or mean I mean it's a huge change um it's 
it's a huge change. The The best way I can describe it financially without getting into details, because I don't want to do that and also don't know that I even legally can. Um, but it's the difference between working for a company and being a partner in a company. That's the difference. Um, so it's been great. And now all along with that, in tandem, I've started doing YouTube. You guys. Uh, and that's been a huge boost in my career. It's been... Uh, an extra source of income like I said I'm getting a bunch of students from it and it's just I love doing it it's another creative outlet I like making these videos I like giving you guys the real inside look with no BS you know uh, and that's what it is so I'm uh, I'm really grateful for all of you guys and I hope if you've made it this far that you either found that story just interesting you get to know a little bit about the person talking to you and if you're watching this and thinking about coming down here just knowing that um you know there's a ton in that story i left out i mean i could sit on here and talk for days about all the the ups and downs and the all the auditions i failed i mean i've got at least nine auditions under my belt that i didn't get a call back for i mean you know stuff i've gotten fired off of there's more to the story but that's as concise as i can make it with the highlight points um but I just want you to know if you're coming down here, it takes a lot of work. It's really hard. You're going to have a lot of really rough times. It's really hard to make money. It's really hard to do. You can do it and stick in with it. You can do it. Now, you might stick with it and still never be playing anywhere but Broadway. That's just how it goes. Um, I, you know, luck is when preparation, uh, preparation meets opportunity. And I gotten luck in my career um but i just kept putting myself out there i kept swinging that bat i just kept swinging it and there's still a lot to go from here you know we're not done i haven't just made it and i can sit back and be like oh yeah you know i'm trying to get lanco back up to a platinum album again i i, I want to be a part of that i want to make some money from that too you know all the other guys have already done that i haven't so i hope you guys enjoyed that i hope you found it kind of interesting um and yeah, so, okay, if you've made it this far, I can't thank you enough. If you've liked it, hit subscribe, hit the like button, write a comment down below. Tell me what you think about this story. Do you find this type of content interesting? Is this insightful? I don't know. Um, also, I wanna shout out all the members. You guys, it's awesome. And seeing you guys in the Discord and stuff, if you're interested in joining the membership and getting the Discord in, some of these videos, what I'm gonna start to do is they'll go live one day early for members and then it'll go to just public um but the discord is really i think going to be the fun part for the members so i can't thank you guys enough if you're interested in that there's a link in the description and i think that's where we're going to call it so you guys until next time peace